previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. The next level of fighting, you're going to have to go to a guy named Reynolds. He owns the Rye Inn. Uh, you guys made it to the Rye Inn. Uh, they hit Figus. Well, there's about to be a fight. Who yeah. hit him? You did. Yes, I did. Um, I charged at Ambionitis. I want to warhammer his face. There is a loud crack. You see a man jump up. He says, that's enough. You couldn't wait 20 minutes. <laughs> We're so eager. Is your name Reynolds? Yes, it's Reynolds. Ah, that's why. You guys are going into the ring with a punishment. You get our choice of weapon. You're each standing in a dark space. In front of you, you can see a dagger. All five of you hear the same booming voice. Welcome to the Rye in Pit Fights. Let's get ready to rumble. Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me tonight, I have Ben Renfro. And with me tonight, I have Brixius Hammerbottom. Brad Richards. God damn it, I'm running out of lines. Which is also what Lamar Odom said. Matt Smith. Always remember the principles of safe lifting. Lift with your back as much as possible. Brad Renfro. It's Gooby time. And Eric Nemeth. My mama tells me I got a face for radio. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I love leaving him for last. How's everybody doing? Really well. Uh... Well, good, because you guys are in for quite an episode. We're actually not going to recap. I am going to give you a quick rundown of what you need to know. Oh. And we are going to get right to it. So, last episode, our players went to the Rye Inn, and as they were sitting down for a meal of stew, Ambionitis punched Figus in the face, which caused a reaction from Prothean, which caused a reaction from Brixius, which led to a brawl, which led to a reaction from the owner of the Rye Inn, whose name is Reynolds, and he had his goons knock you all unconscious, and you were then led into the fighting rings underneath the inn. And now you are fighting at a disadvantage. All you have is a dagger and you do not have armor. We got this. Yeah. <laughs> Those of you that do not have armor, in case you don't know what that is, your unarmored armor class is 10 plus your dexterity and your dagger is a 1d4 light, thrown, and finesse weapon. If you want to throw it, it is going to be a range of 20 feet or 60 feet with disadvantage. Frickin' arm throwing dagger at like 60 feet. Good job, Matt. Well, that's why Thank I said you. disadvantage. <laughs> so, any questions before we get right into it? What was the name of the person I'm fighting again? Your... Well, actually, I'm going to run through that okay. again. So, just a reminder of what the space looks like. It is kind of like a honeycomb setup. There are five oval rings that are surrounded by stands, and in the middle is where all of your opponents came out of. There are cheering fans around each of your ovals, and underneath the bleachers, through the wooden slats, you can see each other. So... The announcer came over the loudspeaker and said, In ring number one, we have Gera fighting Jet. In ring number two, we have Dosh fighting Kimra. In ring number three, we have Prothean fighting Valandar. In ring number four, we have Ambionitis fighting Torias. In ring number five, we have Brixius fighting Error. No, wait. <laughs> Error. <laughs> error. There's about to be an error on his error. part. The DM broke. Error. Please stand by while we fix some technical difficulties. 
Your first era was stepping in the ring with me. In ring number five, we have Brixius fighting Iver. <laughs> fighting like insert I'm enemy it. here. <laughs> no, that's like... right. Iver. <laughs> Man. Looks like I'm having chicken for dinner. The boneless? <laughs> KFC. The Colonel. Iver. Just gotta kind of drown that one out at the end. All right. And, um, you know. You guys have been playing your characters very well, and you guys have gotten into all sorts of things that I never expected. So you can all have inspiration at the beginning of this fight. Oh, boy. You're probably going to need it. Oh, dear. Thank you. And then you hear over the loudspeakers, Let's get ready to rumble! And we are going to start with ring number one, Jet. Which uh, competitors are in the rings on my left and right that I can see? To your left, you have Dosh, and on your right, you have Brixius. In front of you is Gera. Gera is a female wood elf. She is wearing green leather armor, and she is staring you down, waiting to see what you do next. All right, I'm going to look over to Dosh, and as the crowd's cheering, I'm going to say to him that it... It's because they love the frosted tips, man. This is true. So I'm going to point to the tips, and then <clears throat> and then I'm going to take a defensive stance. No, I, you know, I'm just going to go after my opponent here. I'm going to throw the dagger at her. Or how far away are we? Uh, the rings are 50 feet long. So right now you guys are approximately 40 away from each other. Okay. So I'm going to run up to where I'm at 20 feet away and then throw my dagger at her. All right. Making the first move. Go ahead and roll to see if you hit her. And for the throwing, am I, what am I adding to this? You add. Or? You use dexterity for thrown weapons. Okay. And then is there any sort of proficiency to that or do I just add the number? Only if you have proficiency in that weapon. Which I do. So I rolled a 15. All right. That is going to hit her. Go ahead and roll your damage. And we said a dagger is a d4. D4 plus your dexterity. Okay. That would be an eight damage. Okay. Shit, I haven't had to do math like this in a while. Subtraction? <laughs> you guys haven't been in combat for a while. <laughs> oh. And then I do have a question, actually. Since one one of my stats here, the things I can do is a patient defense or something, I, where I spend a Kai, it says I can take a dodge action as a bonus. Would I have to, like do that and then it's like loaded for if they attack me or correct because the dodge action would give you would give the opponent disadvantage on their attacks okay so yeah you can take a defensive stance if you want to uh not this turn i just wanted to okay know that well she is going to get caught by the dagger she's going to try and move out of the way but it's going to slice across her cheek and it's going to she's going to duck her head and hair falls over her face, and you hear the announcer, Oh, and Jet takes the first blow. It's a grazing blow against Gara's cheek, but what's this? And you see Gara flick her hair back, and she's staring at you through her hair, anime style. Gara's coming back. Gara goes Super Saiyan. Ah! I quit. (laughs) Kamehame. I quit. Okay, I'm done. (laughs) All you hear is screaming for the next half hour of this podcast. Half, half hour, it's at least 13 episodes of nothing, but let's check in on Vegeta. Ah! Hey, guys. What about Goku? Ah! <laughs> Maybe Gohan's finished powering up yet. Ah! Krillin's... And dead. Krillin is still dead. Hey, guys. How many Saiyans does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh, I actually kind of want to hear this. How many? How many? Just one, but takes seven episodes and Krillin dies. <laughs> That's actually funny. But what's this? Gera's coming back. And she whips out a quarter staff, and she runs forward. She's low to the ground. Her feet are moving, but her arms aren't. Her quarter staff is back behind her. She's dragging it along the ground, and then she whips it up through your jaw, or at least she's going to try to. Yeah, let's, well, let's give me a chance here. And she rolls an 18 Okay, okay, that'll do it. So she is going to hit you for... Oh boy. Four damage. Okay, okay, I'll take that. Wrecked. Does not phase me. I'll take a smack to the face and I just 
straight face. I'm just going to keep staring her down. Your head doesn't move and the quarterstaff just breaks on your chin. Can we just talk about this? It just phases straight through your face. <laughs> but there's a big old red mark right where it hit. And the announcer goes, ooh, and that's quite a blow to, that comes back against Jet. What is he going to do? Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. So we're staying with me for a minute. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So she's already up in my face here, so I will... Wait, is, is my dagger still stuck in her? No, it grazed her cheek and blew past. Okay, I was going to take it back out of her and just stab her, <laughs> stab her again. But, um, okay, we're just going to go with my... I'll, I'll do a regular attack, unarmed, unarmed strike, which... 23. Will hit. And then I will expend a Kai point, flurry of blows, to do an extra two unarmed strikes. Do I roll for each of those? Yes. Okay. 17. 17 will hit. Okay. And the last one is a... That one was a 12. That one will not do it. So you get two blows. Excellent. And so it's what I roll plus dexterity. That's first one's a nine. And the second one is another nine. You deal 18 damage? Yes. Damn. And I'm saying, it seems we can't just talk about this, so... Pow, pow. Well, go ahead right. and describe it. Pow right in the kids. So I'm going to go with the Captain Insano <laughs> finger poke to the eyes, and then I'm going to throttle her directly in the center of the chest plate. And you're just going to hear the entire stands taking a collective gasp. And then <sighs> I guess since I missed the third attack, it was like I tried to do a double kick, but she like fell away after my first kick, so I missed. And the announcer comes over the loudspeaker. Oh, and that's quite a blow to Gera. She's looking a little tired. Can she come back? And then we're going to go over to Dosh. Mm-hmm. All right, so do I get to go first? Right now, you are staring down Kimra, who, just to remind everybody, is wearing an apron. And the one with the dead dad who is trying to avenge her dead dad somehow. That yeah, is me by and fighting. What? Me and Ambionitis have a dead dad and we're trying to avenge him. Oh, he doesn't have a dead gym. dad that they're trying to avenge. Uh, you know from her introduction that she used to work in a bar and she has curly brown hair and she is, you notice, a half-elf like yourself. Right now she's kind of looking at you and she's moving forward slowly with her hands out to her sides. Didn't we also figure out last episode that you might have recognized her from, like, work or something? No, I think that was a halfling someone was fighting. Yeah, you recognize the name of Valandar. Yeah. Like, it rings a bell, but you don't... So they work for the... I think you said they work for the Crow's Heads. Yeah, they have an affiliation with the Crow's Heads, but it, it, it rings a bell, but you don't know the name. All right, so how far am I from Kimra? Kimra is walking forward towards you, and she's got her hands out kind of in supplication and she for that shit and she is closing the distance from 40 feet she's 30 feet 35 feet away right now gonna hit her with dissonant whispers okay and how does that work all right she has to do a wisdom saving throw and let's see on a failure she takes 3d6 psychic damage and is compelled to run away (gasps) like a bitch and on a success she only takes half damage and she doesn't run away Okay, what is the DC? Uh, That's going to be a 15. All right, you put your hand up, and you start gesturing your spell, and you start whispering, and the whispers carry over to her ears. And I want the whispers to say, Kimra, daughter, why do you disappoint me so? Oh, (laughs) that works wonders. Yes. Because she rolled a three. (laughs) Ha ha. So you see her stop all of a sudden, and the crowd around you goes silent. You can still hear the crowds in the other ovals, but your crowd goes silent and she just says, Father? How much damage does she take? Ten. So she takes those ten damage and she starts crying and running away (laughs) from you and she starts pounding on the door that let her into the ring and you hear the entire ring gasp and start booing you <laughs> as the announcer says "Ooh, and that was a dirty trick Coming i'm pretty out, sure only she can hear me well yeah only she can hear you but uh the announcer is watching you and kind of dictating to people and he says "Ooh, and that was a dirty trick 
He pulled out a dissonant whisper on the poor Kimra. And she's running away. She hears, what does she hear? And you hear her screaming, Father, please, I'm sorry. She hears her father How low. I'm just going to shrug. <laughs> <laughs> How long does that last? Uh, oh, I don't know, actually. I think it's until they're attacked again. Or she might have to take a saving throw every turn. Okay, so it's just for that turn, the creature must use its reaction to move as far away as possible from you. Gotcha. So she has moved as far as the edge of the fighting arena, and that's it. She is there for the time being. Do you want to push your advantage? Going. To, how far am I from her now? Now you are 50 feet. You use vicious mockery. Okay. <laughs> and the wisdom saving throw is yeah, a same 16. Thing. Or 15. 15? That one is a 15, so she is not affected by your mockery, but go ahead and call her out. Hurts, don't it? She turns around <laughs> and she's got tears on her on her cheek, and she says, "You're gonna pay for that." And man, Dosh is a fucking asshole. <laughs> I might have to drop down to evil for this episode. Um, she winds up pulling out two daggers from underneath her apron, and she is going to throw both of them at you. Shit. And the announcer comes over the loudspeaker. Kimra is back, and there's hell to pay for Dosh. She throws two daggers. The first one is a 15. No, wait, is a... Oh, much higher than that. Is a 19. That might hit. Okay, and the second one is a 15. That might also hit. So both of those hit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the distance on those? Oh, she's throwing from 50 feet away, so she's at disadvantage. All right, well, the first one was uh, 15, so that still hits. I got you. Oh, man, that one was a natural 20. Another 15. Oof. So she hits you both times with the daggers, but she does not crit. And she is going to deal a total of eight. Jesus. The announcer says, oh, when she lands both blows. Kimra's back in fighting style, and she's ready to roll. Going to viciously mock her again. You call her out, and what do you say to her? Good job throwing away your weapons, jackass. She just lowers her head. And she starts charging at oh, you. Oh, shit. <laughs> she is unaffected by your vicious mockery, and she is going to draw a rapier from beneath the folds of her dress, and she is going to <laughs> lunge forward at oh, you. Oh, man, I'm fucked. <laughs> Literally. And she rolls a 19. God damn. So that is going to hit you. The announcer is going to say, and here's another attack, the Kimra dive. <laughs> is it like a jumping lunge? Yes. A flesh is what that's called. Oh, Fucking yeah, you, you fence. Duh. <laughs> okay. The Kimra special. Go on. A leg. Oh, flesh. here we go. The Kimra special. A father's flesh. Uh, don't oh. say that. Oh, <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> okay, hold on. It sounded better in my head, okay? No, it sounded, <laughs> it sounded great. It Keep it. It, it Keep sounded it. exactly the way it came out. I'll say I set you up for that one and you knocked it out of the park there. Thank you for that, Mr. Camper. <laughs> so she deals seven. Piercing damage with father's flesh. How I, far did she run? This is kind of a fluid. <laughs> this is kind of fluid. She dashed and technically she took two turns, but you also took two turns. I guess that's true. So we are now going to move over uh, a ring and Ambionitis, your turn. You are facing down to Rias, who is a giant female human. She walked out of the... Oh, no, it's Taraya. Ambionitis, you are facing down Taraya, who is a giant female human. She walked out of the holding area, and she was cracking her neck left and right and, fle and stretching her arms back and forth. She's built like one of the high school football players who just walks around and he's got his head cocked to the side and can barely move his neck. She has arthritis. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> and she is actually going to attack first. She is going to close the distance between you, throwing a javelin as she does so. She is going to roll a 14. My AC is 14. All right, so that's going to hit you. The announcer says over the loudspeakers, and Taraya's into it right off the bat, just like she always is. She's going for the gut, and the javelin is coming straight for your gut. It's going to impact you, 
and it is going to glance through the side. So you're going to take damage, but you don't have a javelin in your belly, which is good. Oh, cool. And you are going to take... He is out to kill us today, and I take half damage. Are you in a rage, too? Yeah, I was going to say, I take half damage. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said you were in a rage last week. That's Uh a good thing, because you take eight. So minus that, or half of that is four. Thank you for letting the math challenge person know how much he takes. I appreciate it. (laughs) And your turn. She is closing the distance fast. She is now 20 feet from you. I'll charge her and stab her. With your dagger? No, with my pe- yes, with the dagger. <laughs> All right, and Abionidas is right into it as well. He's coming forward, he's brandishing his dagger, and he... He uses his own special move, which he has also named Father's Flesh. <laughs> oh, that's not okay. 17. Nope. 19. And he's going to pierce her in the side, mirroring his own wound, and he's going to deal damage it's not going to be much. Seven. But it's more than you think a dagger could deal. Tariah is grabbing her side, and she looks like she's in a bit of pain. Hold up. Nine. Because of your rage bonus? Because I forgot the rage bonus. And it seems like it's dealing her more pain as she stands there. Equivalent to nine damage. <laughs> oh my lord. I don't know how much... It hurt her, but if I had to assign a number, it'd be nine. (laughs) All right, Taraya is going to slowly draw her great axe from over her back, and she is going to swipe two-handed right across your chest. I feel like I probably should have noticed that she had a giant axe. (laughs) She is going to hit you because she just rolled a 19. Fuck that bitch. And she is going to deal you... Eight. And then you kind of stumble back as she... Is that eight before Oh, no. Half? So you take half damage. That's four. Thanks. So you're going to kind of stumble back as you're trying to dodge the worst of the blow, and she's going to come at you again. She swiped down from right to left, and now she's swinging back up straight through the middle. That time she rolled a four. So... Bitch. You are still uh, wheeling backwards, and the announcer is going to say, Ooh, and Ambionitis seems to dodge that one. Can he come back? I want to cast Burning Hands. All right. You cast Burning Hands. How does that work? Um, each creature within a 15-foot cone must take a dexterity saving throw. To what? I have no fucking idea. It's eight plus your proficiency. Yep. Plus your uh, charisma. Wow, a whopping 11. All right, so she's going to try and dodge out of the way of your burning hands. She rolled a natural one. Nice. So she's going to see that there's fire forming between your hands, and she's going to try and scoop backwards real quick. Her feet are going to go out from under her, and she is going to take the full brunt of your flames. What do I add to that? Um, You don't add anything oh. to your damage on spells, unless it specifically says. Nothing for rage? I'm pretty sure rage only applies to melee attacks. I have no idea. I never got that far looking at it. Um, 8 plus 3 is 11. All right. So she takes 11 damage on that. And Ambionitis has surprised us all. He is a magic user, and he has dealt his righteous fury against the mighty Toriah. She is singed. She is scorched. But she's not down yet. And we are now going over to Prothean. Got me all excited for Bitch. nothing. Uh, how far away is he? Uh, Valandar is a halfling, a male halfling. He is wearing dark clothes, and he has been pumping up the crowd. He's been waving his arms around. He's 40 feet from you currently. He's got his back to you at the moment. All right. And uh, just so you know, last time, you wound up taking a warhammer straight to the face, and I said that you had a broken nose and a broken occipital bone. So, any ranged attacks that you make are going to be at disadvantage, and you actually have a minus four to your max HP until you heal that. If I use Cure Wounds right now, would I heal that? Yep, would get rid of it. What about Lay on Hands? Would also work. Because you're a paladin, you can use Uh, Lay on Hands even on yourself. Yeah, you can. Uh, Can I use Lay on Hands right now? Sure. All right. Uh, I'm just looking up what land hands is. 1d10 plus paladin level. Alright. 
Is that a dice? I'm just trying to figure out why he has a broken face. Must have tripped or something. I gain 10 damage. I mean, 10 health. All right, so you're back to full max HP. And as you put your hand over your face, your hand starts to glow with divine light from your god, Torm. And suddenly your nose snaps back into place and your occipital bone, your eye socket, starts to... The swelling starts to go down and the redness decreases and you are whole and ready for the fight. The announcer calls out, It looks like Prothean is taking defensive action off the bat. He's making sure that he is ready for this fight. And that gets the attention of Valandar and he turns around and he is going to draw his... Wait, was he like not looking at the person he was supposed to be about to fight? <laughs> he was not at first. Uh, he is going to draw his dagger and he's going to be flipping it in his hand. And he's going to call out to you, Prothean. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to meet your god? I already said, are you ready to meet yours? I've been ready, but it's not me who's meeting him today. This whole battle just comes from a religious conversation where they just keep <laughs> yelling it back and forth. Are you ready to meet your god? No. Are you ready to meet yours? No. Well... <laughs> Valandar ends that conversation very quickly because he is going to throw one dagger and then suddenly there's another dagger flying out of his hand and he's going to throw two at you. The first one is a 20, not natural. How far away is he though? Oh, he's 40 (laughs) feet away. So that time he rolls a two. So does a nine hit you, Prothean? No, my own class is 13. Okay. So he's that first one misses and then the second one is going to be a 16, which is going to hit. And that one is going to deal 7, as it pierces your upper right arm. Alright. Uh, if I sprint, or do a dash, am I able to reach him? No, you would still be... Uh, well, yeah, you could reach him with a dash, but um, it would be his turn before you got there. Alright. Or rather, um, you, I... you wouldn't have any other... You wouldn't have a regular action. You would only have a bonus action. Alright. I ripped a dagger out of my shoulder and started moving closer to him. Okay. Um, There is also the dagger that you did not pick up. It's still on the ground between you, and it is about 10 feet in front of you, 30 feet in front of him. I walk about... I walk up to that dagger, throw one of them. Okay. So... 13... Do I add dexterity? Yes. 16. That is going to hit him... And roll a 1d4, add your dexterity modifier. Six, seven. Seven. Okay, so he takes seven damage. And you hear the announcer say, And Prothean's moving in a very smart pattern. He uses the dagger against its owner and then picks up one so he's still armed. Let's see what Valandar has to do next. And Valandar is going to draw a short sword and... You moved 10 feet forward. Did you move forward any farther? I stayed there on a defensive stance. Okay, so he's going to move up uh, 30 feet with the short sword drawn, and then he is going to shoot you with a light crossbow that he pulls from his belt. And that is going to be a 19. Damage? No, 19 to hit. Oh, okay. So that does hit, because you said your armor class was what? 13. 13, okay. And he is going to deal only 7 on this one. So I'm lost. The bolt is going to catch you in the upper thigh. So I'm down 14 points right now, right? Yeah, that sounds right. Um, I'm going to use inflict wounds on him since I'm within reach. Um, he is still 10 feet from you. Oh, I move 10 feet and use inflict wounds. You run forward and you raise your hand up to grab him. I need you to roll. Natural 20. A natural 20. Okay, well, as you reach out for him, he is going to raise his sword, and you're going to see the sword suddenly switch. Its blade is going to flare open, and it's going to become a shield, raising his armor class by two. But it's not going to be enough to get around that uh, critical hit, so you're going to, at the last second, dodge around that blade that is now a shield, and you are going to grab him by the upper arm, And you're going to inflict wounds. Roll me that damage. Eight, nine, two. 
So 19? Uh, 19. Yes. Damn. The announcer says, And Prothean has shown amazing dexterity. He has just dodged around Valandar's trademark shield blade, and he has grabbed him and inflicted wounds upon him, dealing a terrifying blow to his... What's the word I'm looking for? Base. Arm. Pecs. <laughs> um, Chest. no. Titties. Boobs. Biceps. To Bicep. his health. His well-being. <laughs> his confidence. <laughs> And you see Valandar go to a knee. He looks like he is about ready to collapse. Wreck his shit. And now it is Brixius's turn. We're going to zoom over to his ring. And Brixius, so you are standing in front of Eider, who is a bird man. You've never seen this before, but you but based on his introduction from last episode, he came from the mountain isles in the Coruscant Sea. He has his Wings spread, and he is going to immediately, once the announcer says, let's rumble, he is going to fly up into the air. Nice. So he is now 25 feet from you, but he is 10 feet above you. All right. Gotcha. First question for you. Um, well, you said I've never seen this before. Have I ever heard tales of Birdmen? No. No? Great. Second question for you. Do I have a piece of copper wire? Or is there one nearby? Um, you don't have anything on you, um, unless you have, like, a necklace or something that had copper wire on it. I'm naked, so... Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Um, you can give me a perception check to see if you see any copper around you. Is this gonna, like, if I do this, is it gonna hurt my other actions for this turn? No, you can look, and then you can decide what you want to do. All right, so my perception was a 12. Okay, so you don't see anything in your immediate vicinity. You think that maybe one of the people in the crowd is wearing some copper jewelry, but that's it. All right, it's not worth it. I was just going to use my message spell so I could tell Ambionite is something, but that's fine. You could just call out. You can see him. Oh, wait, no, you can't see him. He's too away from you. Do I want to shout? No, that's just rude. Um, <laughs> what were you gonna shout? I was gonna say, walk hard, bitch. I fucking hate you. <laughs> and then you have a chance to respond to me, but it's, it's, it's nothing. Mm, okay. So, do I notice if the Birdman has any weapons on him? Yes, you do see that he has a few javelins strapped to his back, and he does have a weapon belt, so he probably has a dagger as well. Okay, and do I see any other weapons in the arena other than the dagger? Because I did not pick up the dagger because it was dark, and I had other thoughts in my head that we might... It might have been a trick or something along those lines, but are there other weapons around? No, just the dagger. Okay. But you can see to your right, you can see Jet, and to your left, you can see Prothean through the slats of the bleachers. Okay, so let me try to do this. Can I just kind of pick up the dagger and fling it up, trying to pierce his wing so he can no longer fly? And then, after I did something like that, would I be able to take a ready action after that? Or is that too many actions in a turn? Uh, you would have to action surge to do the ready action. Not going to do that. I won't swing first this, this fight. So, pretty much what I'm going to do is... All I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ready action right now to ready myself in case he were to throw spears or daggers at me so that I can dodge and evade and then essentially pick up one of them on my own. Okay, so if he throws something at you, you're going to try and dodge it? Yes. Okay, Um, so you're in a defensive stance ready for his attack, but what he actually does is he dive bombs you, and he is going to... Uh, attack with his talons. So he is going to roll a 17. Yep. And that is going to deal... Oh, fell out of my... Fell out of my dice tray. You're lucky that was a 4. Oh, it's another 4. Plus his dexterity, so that's a 6. Okay. And he's going to slash across your shoulders, and then he's going to fly back up, and he's going to stay up there. Is that a disengage? Yes, you can take a take an opportunity attack. I guess, what would that be? Just kind of like punching him? Because I never picked up the dagger? Yeah. Okay, that's a 19. 
That's going to hit him. And then what is that? Just a one plus my strength for a punch? Yes. All right, so that'll be four damage. Actually, since it is a melee attack, well, my fighting style is dueling. So when wielding a melee weapon in one hand and nothing in the other hand, I gain damage since I don't have a weapon in one hand. Is that not a one-handed attack then? Correct. Okay, I guess. That which makes no sense why well, I have to have something in one hand to do more damage with a other one-armed strike, but I guess <laughs> I guess the way it's worded. That's strange. All right, so then it's just uh, four damage. Okay, so Iror is going to fly back up, and he's going to fly even higher this time, and he's going to try dive-bombing you again. This time, he's coming in faster, and he is going to roll a 14 this time. Does that hit? It also does. Okay, so this time, he is going to do his normal 1d4 plus an extra 2d6. He's going to do nine. All right, I'm going to parry this one using one of my superiority die, where I can spend one superiority die to reduce it by the roll of a d8 plus my dexterity modifier. Okay. So minus five damage, so he only does four there. Okay. And when you parry, as he's dive bombing, the announcer is going to call out, Oh, and Ira is making a vicious attack. He is diving straight for Brixius. And what's this? Brixius manages to parry his claws away, dealing less damage and also knocking Ira off his balance. He crashes into the dirt, but what's this? He's standing right away and he's ready to fight. Ira is going to slide across the dirt and he's going to pop up, drawing a javelin and spinning around in the dirt on his knee, throwing it back at you. And this is going to be an 11. That misses. Okay, so he's a, he's still off balance and he's trying to move too fast. He throws the javelin wide. What's your move? Is the javelin landing nearby me? No. Okay, then I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a firebolt at him, trying to light all of his feathers on fire so he can no longer fly and burn because birds burn when they catch on fire. 19. A 19 will hit him. Okay, so Firebolt does 1d10 fire damage. Seven. And flammable objects catch on fire. Again, I believe feathers are flammable. Not the way that you think. He's going to be singed, but he is not going to go up in flames like he's li- like he's covered in kerosene. <laughs> hmm. All right. And then I guess am I, I'm going to spend my actions... Act- uh, uh, uh action surge so that I can ready for another attack. Whether he... I'm gonna ready in case he charges me again. If he charges you? Okay. If he makes a melee attack, you will be ready for it. And we are going to move away going back to the first person in this fight. We're going to go back to Jet. Master Paul here. Hope you're enjoying our episode 17 pit fights. Just a few quick messages for you, and then I'll get you back to the action. This week, our podcast partner is The Comments Section, hosted by Tim K. It's a show that interviews the anonymous trolls, philosophy kings, edgelords, and knowledgeable insiders from the internet's comments section. The latest episode is with Crush Crush Aya discussing the new anime Goblin Slayer. Tim does a great job making his guests feel at home and listening to what they have to say. So check out what's happening in the comments section on iTunes, Google Play, or at soundcloud.com slash the underscore comments underscore section. If you're interested in becoming a podcast partner, send an email with a quick synopsis of your show and a 30-second promo, if you have one, to deathsavingbros at gmail.com. We'll review your pitch and get back to you. For those of you who haven't left a review yet, please head over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or Stitcher and leave us your thoughts. What better way to tell us what you think? We grow from your feedback, the show reaches more new listeners, and you get published forever on the internet. It's a win-win-win, so go leave your review now. If you've been following us on social media, you may have seen that we made a special announcement. Well, 
Maybe you saw it online first, since we did publish it on Twitter a day before this episode came out, but you definitely heard it here first. We are super excited to announce the first Death Saving Bros guest. We will be joined by Chris Locke, creator of The Retroverse, a new 5th edition compatible setting inspired by your favorite 80s nostalgia. He was a blast to have on the show, and we're really looking forward to sharing the adventure with you. So, make sure you tune in next week to catch the adventure. Our guest episode with Chris will actually take the place of the originally planned Halloween costume episode, but don't worry, you'll hear that one a few weeks down the line. For now, let's get you back to the Rye in pit fights. Without further ado, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. So, Gera, after you deal the blow to her, that poke in the eye and then punch straight to the chest, she's going to reel back and she's going to do a flip backwards and she is at, in midair. You're going to see her arms, which are down, start growing hairy and mm. claws are going to grow out of her fingers mm. and then her body is going to elongate and grow big and fluffy mm -hmm. and her head is going to elongate into a snout mm -hmm. and you are now facing hmm. a brown bear can Dosh see this happen I'm sure you'd at least be able to hear it happen that can't be a silent transformation it sounds terrifying she doesn't do a little like Rah! thing that people do in movies when they turn into werewolves she's just like fucking shit ow god damn it <laughs> ow can Dosh see this um yeah you could see you could see it bear just suddenly land in the ring. Hot. <laughs> you can't, like, sing bears to sleep, can you? As a... Fuck no. <laughs> um, when... Uh, I guess I don't know if this means they get more health when they transform or something, but cool. She doesn't look like she's hurting as much. Fantastic. Is that her move? Yeah. Alright, well, I'm gonna see what this bear is made of, and I'm gonna go for the old one-two punch again. All right, you run forward, and as you do so, the announcer is calling out, And Gara has just turned into a bear! <laughs> <laughs> but that does not stop Jet. Jet is fearless as he runs in, throwing a punch. Oh yeah, I love fights here, so there's a nice little gleam in my eye as I roll a 20, unnaturally. That will hit. And I actually, I kind of messed this up last time. Since there's a new found fire in my eyes, I'm going to remember that I can, after an attack, I can just do a, another unarmed attack as a bonus action. And then I can spend a Kai point. So I could have actually gotten another one in there. But I'm going to do my bonus action unarmed strike, which is a 13. Okay, that will also hit. So you've got two down, and now you're going to use another Kai point oh, to yeah. do Flurry of Bullows. Oh, I sure am, which gives me another two opportunities here to roll a, another 13. Okay, also hit. And finally a 23. All of those hit. Alrighty, so we have f four 44s here. So the first one is an 8. The second one is a 9. The third one is an 8. And the fourth one is only a 6. And my ideal interpretation of this is I just run up until I'm directly in front of her, or this bear-looking thing, and my arms just move so fast you can't see all the punches until the last one. And in my own mind, it's like a nice little, like, shock wave kind of explodes from around there, but I'm sure, I don't, I don't know how cool this is gonna be. <laughs> just run in, like, right hook, left hook, right hook, left hook. Ah, uh, just robot arms, like rock'em, sock'em <laughs> robots or whatever. Okay, so you deal a total of... 8 plus 9 is 17, plus 8 is 24, 5, plus, plus six. 6 is 31. So you deal 31 damage to this bear, and there is a shockwave of force from the furiousness, the fury of your blows. 
and the entire crowd cheers as you do this. And the announcer says, It looks like we have a new favorite in the house. Jet has just dealt an unseemly powerful blow to the bear. Gera is right back where she was. She looks like she's hurting, and it doesn't look good for her. Imagine if you went to a boxing match and one of the boxers just fucking turned into a bear. Fucking terrifying. That'd it's be like, awesome. It's like that comic <laughs> strip of like the two boxers and the one guy just starts like with the hands like Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Kamehame. The other guy's just, I quit. And like the after review, they were talking about it and he was like, I'm 99% sure that he could not have done the Kamehameha way, but you did. You gotta play it safe, just in case. I'm not screwing with that. <laughs> so the bear is going to run forward. I nimbly dodge. Well, we'll see. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, the bear is we going to uh, first claw at you. Oh. Okay. And is going to roll a natural 20. Okay. So the claws are going to come after you with 12, knocking you to the ground, and then a bite is coming at you. Okay. That is going to miss as you manage to sweep out from underneath, doing kind of like a, a pinwheel kick and stand back up on your feet. I do break dance on my off time. So you are on your feet, and you just had 12 damage done to you by the bear's claws. Your turn. We can't let that one happen again. So we're going to try to end this as fast as possible with the same ideally four-hit combo. All right. Um, are you going for the kill? Or the knockout. Just so you guys know, we're getting to the point now where all of you need to keep in mind, are we going for the kill or the knockout? Because these fights end in death or submission. Okay. So that the announcer actually would say this. Oh, and it's looking like Gera's in a poor place. Is Jet going to go for the submission or is he going to go for the kill? Remember, folks, it is to whichever comes first. Let's rumble. Do we get, like, paid more for a kill versus a knockout? Do we know anything about... You know nothing about the rules because you guys are (laughs) operating on disability after your stunt up in the Rye Inn. Ah, yes. I'm just going to go for the knockout. Well, first thing, I'm going to start with my unarmed strike. I rolled a 15. Hit. Okay. And then my bonus action unarmed strike. 19. And then I'm going to spend another Kai point to try another two. Which will give me a... That one was an 11. Still a hit. Oh. Ah, this bear's got nothing. And a... 19. So all four hit. How do you? How are you going to go about this as you are pummeling this bear into submission? Let's see, I got four hits on him, so I'm just going to use my first hit. I'm going to kick him behind whenever, whatever bear knee he has to kind of try to trip him up a little bit. Okay. And then... I'm going to go for a, use, I guess, two of those attacks. It'll be a double hand neck chop there. Just, just hopefully it'll knock him out Slapping by that point. Slapping the bear over the ears? Yeah, I'm going to b- ear clap him. And if he, he's still fine after that, it's just going to be it. I bring both my hands up above my head and just give him a good old boop on top of the noggin. Okay, <laughs> so roll those damages. Okay, so four damage dice here. Eight, a six... A seven and another six. All right, as you're doing this, the bear is groaning and... And with each punch, the bear is slowly transforming back into Gera's wood elf form. And on the final blow, she is going to be knocked unconscious. And now I'm, she's unconscious, so I'm just kind of looking around. I'm like... Thumbs up, thumbs down, old Roman style. How we doing this? Do you start looking around, and the crowd around you is silent. You can still hear the cheers from the other rings, but there's silence around you for a moment as they can't believe the force with which you just put down this bear. And then they erupt, and you hear, Jet! 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 And now we are swinging back over to Dosh. Oof. All right. It's been real. (laughs) So, Dosh, you're up. Can I, like, walk over to, like, the gate and just kind of watch their fights go on? You can watch from uh, where you are. Okay, so I guess I'm going to start walking around and, like, picking up, you know, little daggers and stuff that were thrown. Okay. And then if I have any free time, I'm going to go watch Dasha's fight. <laughs> yeah, you can see you can see between the slats as you're walking around. Excellent. She's right next to me, right? Uh, yes, she just did uh, Father's Flesh. 
okay. Let's see, I'm gonna stab her with my dagger and use venomous blades. Okay. If it hits. How does that work? Basically, I just use a bardic inspiration to get an extra 2d6. Okay. Uh, roll to see if you stab her. For fuck's sake. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to use inspiration. <laughs> all right, re-roll that. Yeah, you guys have that inspiration. You don't have to use it. You can keep it, but... God damn it. Okay. Um, 13? 13 does it. Oof. Oof. Okay. So it's going to be a 1d4, I think. Yeah, 1d4 plus 3, and then 2d6. God damn it. Okay, so 4, and then... 14. 14 damage. Wow. So that one stab with venomous blades comes around, and where do you want to stab her? Straight in the neck. You stab <laughs> her in the neck, like in the back of the neck, though, because you're wheeling around her rapier, and you come in with a haymaker, and you stab her right where the shoulder joins, and she is going to grab her shoulder and step back quickly, she is not looking good. Neither am I. You didn't kill her, but she is a vegetable now. <laughs> All right, she is going to slash wildly with her rapier. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> and she is going to swing with a 16 first. First? Okay. And then she's going to swing again. That's how we're doing it. <laughs> with an 11. Well, the 11 misses. Okay, so she is going to deal... Four. Just enough. Just enough. To save you or to put to you down? To wreck my shit. 100%. You had four HP left? Yep. Yes, oh, I did. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so Dosh goes down. Question for you. So my last <laughs> turn, I used my action surge wrong where I can actually take an additional action instead of a bonus action. Would I be able to redo something like that that would give Dosh temporary hit points? Um, no, because a ready action is an action. And then I can use a bonus action as well. It says I can use both. Would I be able to still give him temporary hit points? Um, It's one of my maneuvers. It's called Rally, where I can give him temporary hit points if I can hear or see him. Yeah, uh, no, you are not in an adjacent ring to him. Hmm. I tried. Since I am in an adjacent ring to him, there is something I could have done, I think. Um, as a bonus action or a reaction? No, I mean, like, for me, since my fight was done, like, I don't know if I just, like, can see him about to get murdered and then use a little thing that I can do. What can you do? So, what I was going to... How far is Dash from me? Uh, he is about 60 or 80 feet. Well, unless he was 30 feet away from me. Mm-mm. Oh, wait, I can... Mm. Well, I guess now we decide whether, uh, <laughs> they choose to go for the kill... Or the, or the put out. Let's see. There's no, no way Kimmer's going for the knockout after the shit I said. <laughs> Will Dosh <laughs> get killed or knocked out? I'm still waiting. Jet is still looking at his cards. So is Kimmer I... like, is she like female Inigo Montoya? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! What does he say? You killed my father. Prepare to die. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, I guess. Kind of. Nice. I can respect that. The only thing I could do, I won't do, which would be to cast darkness over there, which I think that would just confuse everybody more than help anybody. Okay, so Dosh goes down, and I need you to make a death saving throw for me. One. This is all or nothing. Oh my god. A 20. Oh my god. (laughs) So Dosh is back up with one HP. (laughs) So the announcer over the loud... over your arenas shouting and Kimra has managed to knock Dosh down. She, her wild slashes have cut him down. But wait, what's this? Dosh is back up. He's rallying. He's ready for another fight. He's still in this. I throw up. No. Um, <laughs> wait, do I get an action now? Yeah, it's your turn. I guess Venomous Blades again. You can submit if you want to. She's not gonna let me live. There's no way. Uh... 14. 14 will hit. Wow. Seven. Is enough to put her down. Are you killing her? Mm. Or are you causing her to go unconscious? Hmm. I feel like stabbing someone with a poison dagger should probably kill well, them. Well, but... I mean, it'd be more like venomous in, in terms of like, oh, you've just, you're 
you're feeling venomous. All right, I guess I'll just knock her out. All right. So how are you going to knock her out? I want to, let's see. Hmm. Back of the handle. I want to stab her. I want to catch her in the tendon of the forearm, make her drop her spray beer. All right. And just like headbutt her. Okay. <laughs> that works. She goes down. Prothean, your ring. And then you throw Do I up. still have my loot on me? Yes. I want to whip out my loot. Okay. I don't want to start playing. I get knocked down. But I get up again. <laughs> and they have going to keep, keep me down. down. I get knocked. The entire crowd starts singing. <laughs> yes. I get knocked Knock down, down. But I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. I get knocked down. But I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. All right, Prothean. I want to just keep that going as You're this up. thing goes on. Pissing the night away. Oh, uh, do I think a dagger is going to kill Valandar? Or how close to death is Valandar? Valandar looks super fatigued. All right, I stab him with my dagger. All right, are you going for the submit or the uh, unconscious or the knockout? Uh, kill. You're going for the kill? Okay. Actually, no, I'll go for the knockout. I have something planned after this. Okay. 17. 17 will hit. And uh, it doesn't matter how much damage you do, you are going to knock Valandar the fuck out. All right. He had one HP left. So he goes down, you swing. I, well, actually, you go ahead and describe it. All right, I basically just hit him in the head with the dagger to knock him out that way. So you bop him on the forehead, and he just drops backwards like he's about to do a snow angel. After the that, I angel. pick a walk behind him, pick him up by the collar, tell him to send my guards to him. Then, have, wait, have you seen the movie American History X? Oh, jeez. I have not. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, do you know what a curb stomp is? Oh, man. Yes. I'm going to do that with his mouth on his um, sword. Jesus. Oh, my. Fuck. <laughs> Good Lord. Good um, Lord, son. So you... So you hold the sword up and you just dr- drop his face on the sword? No, um, you put the sword in his mouth, the blade facing inward, put him out, his head down and just stomp on the back of his head to, quickly with all your force. Wow. <laughs> That's fucked, man. Um, hold on. The crowd loves it. Nice. <laughs> the announcer says, We have a bloodthirsty participant in the ring. And Prothean has come out ahead. Uh, now we're going to do Ambionitis. Is the dagger dexterity or strength? The dagger is dexterity. And I definitely used it wrong the first time. <laughs> I think it's it's both if it's finesse. Like you can oh, yeah, it is finesse, use so you can use either one. Okay. All right. Good point. All right. Thank, Thank you. Good. I was thinking I usually play like rogues, so I'm used to using dexterity. Okay, so you're fine. Um... It's not your turn, though. It's actually Taraya's turn. Okay, so Taraya is going to take her great axe, and she's going to come at you again. She's going to lumberjack swing at you twice. The first time is going to be a natural one. So nice. she is going to swing at you, and you're going to dodge out of the way, and she's going to bury her axe in the ground. Your turn. I'm going to stab her. All right. She uses her second action to yank it free, but in that time you're able to close the distance and the announcer calls and Taraya has made a fatal mistake as Ambionitis dodges forward with his dagger. Let's see what he can do. Oh, it's in between. Oh, it's off the table. Hit me in the dick. 19. 19 will hit. 7. 7 is still a pretty decent hit. Taraya is going to come back with a whirl around and she's going to hold her great axe out and she's going to be swinging at you, kind of like uh, Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda style. This time she rolls a 17 and a 14. Both hit. And those are going to deal 6 and 8. So that is 14 divided by 2 is 7. How are you looking over there? Got 28 left. Wow, you are doing fantastic. (laughs) Okay, uh, your turn. Yeah, I'm just going to stab her again. You go for the stab, timing up the blade just right so you can dodge in there. 14. 14 will not do it, so you try to dodge in, but at the last second you're trying to dodge the great axe as it comes around again for another hit. Wait, I can do stuff. 
I have a divine thing. That's what's written down. Um, a divine thing? Yeah, I wrote down divine <laughs> thing. Once per rest, shitting. Oh, short or long. If saving throw fail or attack roll, I can roll a d4 and add that number to it. Okay, go ahead and roll the d4. Plus four. That is enough. You just needed one. So you are going to manage to stab her as the great axe is coming back around, and you're going to deal. Eleven. That is going to be enough damage that she is going to kind of flinch as the dagger catches her in her left leg, and that's going to throw her great axe swing off, and she because she rolls a four, and she is going to miss you. She is going to limp on her leg as the announcer calls out, and it's looking like Tariah's in deep trouble. Can she pull it out? Can she come back from this brink? And she is going to roll a... 16 that time. Yeah, that hits. Awesome. Well, not for you. (laughs) (laughs) She deals 11 on that one, so half of that round up is 6. We're just going to keep hacking and stabbing because it's working out fairly well. All right. And as you are hacking and slashing, moving in for what looks like might it might be the kill you start hearing from the ring next to you oh my next to him yeah can i give him a bardic inspiration for that um sure you can see him fighting through the slats and you can see that he's still wailing away on this giant human female uh while you, the the person with 19 HP, has managed to put down his opponent. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Ambionitis, you have Bardic Inspiration now from that song. What the fuck is that? You just get to add a... Make sure I still got it right. A 1d6 to pretty much any roll except a damage roll. Oh, okay, cool. You can use it any time in the next 10 minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. So, with that... I become inspired because Chumbawamba is the shit for at least three minutes and 30 seconds of anything they've ever made. (laughs) Because they haven't made shit other than that song. Um, I'm not good at math. 18. 18 is enough. You hit Taraya with your dagger once more. And are you going for the kill or the submit? (laughs) That's a lot of damage I'm about to do. Hold on, let's roll for it. The knockout. You sound so sad about that. Um, how much damage do you do? Twelve. Twelve is ten more than you needed. Taraya takes one more stab to the chest, and she holds the dagger, and she crumples to the ground, and she's kneeling there, and she says, I submit. Ah, bitch. Get it, because she's a female. I don't like your gendered insult. Bitch. But sure. And uh, last but not least, Brixius. Hmm. Ira is uh, still on the ground, and he is going to come at you with a javelin. He's going to throw it from where he is. You took a ready stance against melee attacks, so this one does not have disadvantage. Ira rolls a 23. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do, bird. That'll do. Um, and he is going to deal four. Very well. And uh, he's now going to throw another javelin at you. That one's a 24. That'll also do. And five more damage. You just hear from over the wall, looks like the chicken's having you for dinner. Yeah, you hear somebody in the, in the crowd call that out. And the announcer says, oh, and the crowd's really getting into this one. Looks like Brixius is starting to hurt. Can he come back against this bird man? Can he face off against Ira? How far away is he? He's not far. He's uh, somewhere between five and ten feet. All right. Well, then, is, is it my turn now? Yes. Oh, is that dagger still on the ground next to me? The one from the very beginning that I never picked up? Yes. All right. Is it going to cost me something to take a action to pick it up? No. All right. I'd like to pick it up and then run up and engage in him in melee combat. So, it's on the ground. Do you mind if I describe it? Oh, I guess, Dungeon Master Paul. All right, you run forward, sliding on your knees to pick up the dagger, and as you do, you slice across Ira's hamstring, 
or attempt to roll hit. I would have preferred like a somersault where I grab it mid roll and do that, but okay. That's going to be 18. That's going to hit, and you are going to deal how much damage? You said this one's a d4, correct? Correct. Plus your dexterity or strength, since it's finesse. Nine damage. It's extra impressive, considering you're sliding on your bare ass. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Ira is looking bloodied, and uh, he is going to try and stab you with the dagger as you pass, and he's very fast. He's going to stab you twice. Natural one. So as you pass, he loses his grip on the dagger, and he's going to fumble it out of his hand because of the damage you deal to his leg. It causes him to lose his balance, drop the dagger. He's now on his knee. I'm also going to repost on that one, which is another maneuver that I have when a creature misses with a melee attack. I can spend one of my superiority die to make an attack and then add the roll of my d8 to the attack. Go for it. Or to the damage I added to. So let me see if I hit it first. Hit. Okay, so then mm, it says... I spend one to make attack, and then I add my superiority die roll to attack's damage. So that's going to be another 1d4 plus whatever I roll for a d8. Correct. 13. And you did not add your strength modifier, correct? Not to the d8 roll. I did to the d4 roll. And um, then... Based on what you were saying, it doesn't sound like you would add that because the 1d8 replaces your strength modifier. Okay, so then it would just be my d4 plus my d8 plus my... Additional two to my damage for my fighting style being dueling. So that would be a 10 instead of the 13. Okay. Uh, are you trying to kill or submit Ira? Oh, I, I want... I guess submit right now because I had something else in mind for the way I decide to kill or submit him. So I guess I'll submit now and then go into my turn afterwards because that was his turn. Yeah, so you repost and... Again, just like your brother, you stab him in the chest, but you're holding on to your dagger, and he falls backwards and holds up his wings, his talons out. I surrender. I surrender. I stand up, put the dagger to his neck, look to the crowd, and Roman gladiator style, I want them to give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down, whether I kill him or not. Does this bird man deserve to live? I'm very confused now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to give them an option. Thumbs up and... If I hear the crowd give, uh, not here. Show of hands. (laughs) (laughs) By show of hands, I want to count real quick, everybody. You, sir, I point to, ooh, I want to point up to the announcer. You look up and you see high up above the center of, of these rings, there's a man who you recognize as Reynolds standing there. And he is on a swiveling floating platform looking around at all of the rings. I call up, Reynolds! He's looking down at you, and uh, as you call up to him, you start hearing faintly, I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never gonna keep me down, I get knocked down. And he says, It looks like Ira is down for the count, but what is this from Brixius? He has one move left. Reynolds, you make the call. Thumbs up, he lives. Thumbs down, he dies. And the crowd starts cheering louder. You hear a swell as Reynolds goes, Well, we've never seen this before. What do you say, folks? Cheer if he lives. And you hear cheering. Let's hear it if he dies. Cheer if he dies. You hear that one crazed fan go just solo. Yeah, get him. The cheering gets louder. I look around and then slit his throat. And the crowd goes ballistic. And they start shouting, Brixius! 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 And Reynolds points down at you and says, We have a man of the people right here. Brixius is the victor. All six of our contestants are newcomers from the Black Waters. They have all passed their challenge. They all are victors. And the crowd goes nuts around all of you. And the gates open up, and you are free to enter into the holding area. Lego. I want to lay out a quick solo. I want to nail Dragon Force perfectly. 
Jesus lord. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed a light crossbow on my way out and some bolts. Reynolds says, uh, 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 Protheum, leave it be. You'll have your choice of prizes next time on the Death Saving Bros. Can I cut off the bird's beak for bird's beak stew? <laughs> no. It's going to hurt um, Horn mm- caught right in the beak. No, it's just a mask he wears, you find out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, you're not really a bird man, pulls off the mask. So um, It's old man Jenkins. <laughs> Nice job, everybody. That We got to see a little bit of your fighting styles. We really haven't gotten to see like a wide array of what you can do. Repost and parry and flurry of blows and ready in an action and venomous blades. I had fun. You had a good time. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. How have you not seen American History X? I haven't seen a lot of movies. I mean, I've seen a lot of movies, but I've also not seen a lot of movies. That's a pretty fucked up scene, too. Like it's. Oh, it is. I posted on a group chat. Yeah, they cut away from it, but it's still graphic. Jesus. <laughs> well, um, for those of you listening at home, we hope you enjoyed this combat-heavy uh, episode. L- probably a little bit longer than usual, uh, even with cutting things down or running long. Uh, but if you enjoyed what you heard, head over to iTunes. Take two minutes. Uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or even Stitcher. Leave us some feedback. Uh, that's the best way for us to get some notoriety, get other people to hear us, check us out, and keep growing as a podcast. If you want to keep up with us and follow us outside of the podcast, you can check us out at deathsavingbros.com or on any social media, including Twitter, at deathsavingbros, and use the hashtag deathsavingbros to get in on the conversation online. You can follow me personally at hpcamper. You can follow me at benfro Fifteen. If you would like to follow me, it is Ima underscore B underscore Rad. I'm at B underscore R I C H A nine one eight. And you can follow me at E S N E M E T H. Nah. <laughs> and until next time, keep saving those death throws, and we'll see you on the next one. You close the distance. The announcer says, and Ambionitis is right into it, right behind, right into... Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm right behind her, stabbing her. <laughs> You're correct. I'm trying to prolong my life here as much as I can <laughs> right now. Suck my ass, Dungeon Master. Fuck you, paper. Fuck you, science. I can't believe you said all social medias, including Twitter. Like, that's <laughs> the least common social media out there that we would be on. I get knocked Knock down, down, but I, I get, get up, up again. again. You're never, never gonna, gonna keep me down. down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Woo. You're never, never gonna keep me down. This in the night. This in the night. I drink a vodka drink. I drink a cider drink. I drink a lager drink. I drink a whiskey drink. Sing the songs that remind me of the good times. Sing the songs, songs that, that remind, remind me of the bad times. Bad times. Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. The songs, Dangerous, The Descent, I Feel It Coming, Interloper, Invariance, and Morgana Rides are by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution License 3.0. The Death Saving Bros theme song is an abridged version of the song Run by Kai Angle and sourced from the Free Music Archive. This track is used with permission under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0. You can read the full license at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 4.0 slash legal code.